Hello, my name is Denzel and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to texture, light and render inside of Blender's EV Render Engine. Firstly, all the textures that I'm using in this tutorial I got from Polygon. All you need to do is go to the website, go to textures, free textures and download all the textures that you want that happen to be free. Okay, so let's begin. So as usual, we'll delete the default cube. Goodbye default cube. We'll press shift A, create a plane, scale it up just a little bit. If we press shift Z, we'll go into rendered mode. And this is pretty much what it looks like inside of Eevee. We'll then just bring this panel over, go to the shader panel, click new. And now we have a new principled BSDF shader. So here we can change the color or do whatever the heck we like with it. But I prefer to go to the top here, split this window in two, change this top window to the shader editor. So now I can work with the nodes. Shift A and I'm going to add in a texture, image texture. Plug it into the base color. Then I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to plug in input texture coordinates and I'll either go with generated or UVs if I have UVs but for now we'll just go with generated. I'm then going to open up the texture. I have a place where I save all my textures. By the way all of these textures I got on Polygon for free. Uh, just to start off we're going to take a look at cobblestone arches. As you can see, all the textures that you would get from Polygon come with a whole bunch of different maps. So we're definitely going to start with color. And that's what we get. This one's a little bit squished, so we'll just stretch it out. Now it doesn't look very special, but what we can do is just duplicate this. Add in the ambient occlusion map. And the way we add in the ambient occlusion map, because if we take a look at it here, that's what it looks like. It's just all the shadows in between all the crevices. And in order to blend them together, we go down to color, mix RGB, and just plug it in. We set the factor to 1, and change it to multiply. Now, we can see the difference when we fade from one to the other. Now, I didn't intend to do this tutorial for the cobblestones, so I'm just going to change the textures quickly. I just wanted to demonstrate how to use ambient occlusion because that was the clearest example I had. Uh, I'm going to go to the city street road asphalt two lane worn 001. We'll use the 6k map for the color. Uh, we'll do the same thing for this one. Just find the ambient occlusion map there. As you can see for this one, the ambient occlusion isn't quite as uh, noticeable. It just makes the cracks a little bit darker. But it still doesn't look very realistic. Our next step, we're just going to duplicate one of these. Let's just plug in the generated into the vector and plug in the generated into this vector as well. And we'll just plug it into normals. We'll change the map though to be the normal map, uh, which normally ends with NRM. Now it doesn't look quite right just yet and that's because we need to press shift a and tell it that it's using a normal map and the way we do that is by going to vector normal map and we just add it in between the two and we change the color mode over to non color data now everything looks a lot better so we can increase this as much as we like. So it's very bumpy, but uh, yeah, you generally don't want to do that. One should be more than enough. For this one in particular, I actually quite like two. Okay, so we're missing a few more things. So we're going to want to duplicate, set it down over here and plug it into the roughness. We're going to open up the textures again and as you can see there's no roughness map but there is a gloss map which is the opposite of a roughness map 
So it doesn't look realistic. It looks almost shiny, like it's almost like a wet road maybe, but it's not very realistic. And that is because it's a glossy map and not a roughness map, so we have to invert it. We can press Shift A, go over to Color, Invert, but what I prefer to do is go to Convert, Color Ramp, plug it in, and then just switch these two colors around. And now we have the added benefit of having these sliders to play around with the contrast. So now our road looks like it's got a little bit of moisture on it. And now our road looks a little bit like it's wet. Just to help uh, with the contrast, let's go over to the world settings over here. Click use node, change it to black or set the strength to zero. Ah, there we go. Now we've got a lot more contrast and we can see that uh, specular map a little bit easier. Uh, I rate that's good enough. Let's increase it this side. Ah, there we go. See, it's already looking a little bit more realistic. Let's just lift this above the grid. The grid's in the way. Now, one thing that I personally like to do, let's just plug in the generated into the vector. Okay, now one thing I like to do is press Shift A, go to Color, Mix RGB, just pop it in over there. Then I press Shift A, and I add a procedural texture, Musgrave. And I plug it into the bottom. Um, I then change this to 100% and change it to multiply and now my road looked like uh, <laughs> and now my road looks like it's got uh, wet patches on it but it looks like it's got more wet than dry so i want to invert it i'm going to do the same thing that i did with the glossy map to invert it i'm gonna press shift a go to convert color ramp and plug it in over there and just switch the points around and as in the previous example, we've got the added bonus of having some contrast control for our texture. Yay. So let's just duplicate our light. Make this light mm, orange. Make this light blue. Ah, there we go. Beautiful, simple, and realistic. And real time. So if I press render, it took me 1.04 seconds to render. Now that's pretty fast compared to cycles. And it looks pretty darn good. Let's just take a look at a few things that Blender EV has to offer. First, we're just gonna create a little cube for our scene, for our textures to interact with. I think we'll create a, another light. So our scene's a little bit brighter. By the way, if any of the, if you can't find any of your lights inside of the outliner, just expand collections one, and they're all there. Collections is what's replaced groups in blender 2.8 so if anything isn't in your outliner it's normally inside of the collections okay so as you can see our cube doesn't have a reflection doesn't have much of a shadow so let's try and fix that i was gonna delete that so because it has no reflection, we want to give it a reflection. There's a few ways to create reflections inside of Eevee. And one of the easiest ways is to go to the render settings, scroll down so you get to screen space reflections and just turn it on. Bam! It's a pretty great, almost perfect reflection for what we need. But it isn't always perfect. It has its limitations. So we'll take a look at another way to get reflections. Let's just turn it off quick. We then press Shift A, go down to Light Probes, and Reflection Plane. We'll lift the Reflection Plane 
So it's intersecting with our floor plane. Scale it up a bit so it covers the entire floor plane. We will just lift it up above the current floor plane. There we go. Go over to the light probe panel over here and we'll just turn off show data. And there we have it. It does almost the exact same thing. Now, if we were to go down, if we were to go back to the render settings and click on screen space reflections, it can sometimes look even better to have both turned on at the same time. It sometimes can cause a few issues, but you just decide what works best for you. A few things to keep in mind. If we've got multiple surfaces, let's just duplicate this, maybe just bring it over over here. As you can see, the one doesn't have any reflections and the other one does. That's because, that's because our light probe isn't thick enough. So we need to make our light probe a little bit thicker by increasing its distance. And now both surfaces have reflections. So if, for example, you have a scene that is really geometry heavy and it's running really, really slow using screen space reflections, this can be a way to uh, speed up your scene and decrease your render time. But yeah, play around with the options, experiment a little and see what best works for you. Another thing to take a look at is blue. Now this, this is probably my favorite effect. It's such an incredibly beautiful glow that it gives everything. And you get quite a lot of control on how the results should look. So you can control the intensity, the color, the radius. Uh, you can control the threshold. So if you turn down the threshold, less bright objects will start to glow. But the higher the threshold, the brighter the object needs to be in order to glow. So the knee is... The knee is almost like a type of fall off between the dark and the light areas and what should be glowing. Uh, the intensity is, well, how intensely it glows. Now there's one very interesting thing that I've learned about Eevee. I'm just gonna turn off Bloom real quick. Is if you were to create a mesh light, so let's create a sphere. We'll go over to the shader panel click new, change the shader over to emission. And as you can see, it doesn't emit any light. You can make it as bright as you like. It will show up in reflections, but it won't actually give off any light. So what I like to do is I take a, a real light and I just parent it to the mesh light so now it looks as though this object is lighting the scene but it doesn't look like it's actually emitting real light so what i like to do is we can just set this back to one is use bloom to fake it oh suddenly the object is glowing and it's emitting light it's a nice way to kind of fake the mesh light look uh, hopefully sometime in the future mesh lights will work inside of Eevee but this is a really really great workaround and there your mesh light shows up in reflections it affects uh, specularity and it fakes light emission and it still renders pretty darn fast okay so let's just take a look at HDRI maps and environment fog and volumetrics we go over to our world settings over here we'll set this back to a brighter color in fact we'll just go over to this point over here change it to environment texture and we'll just quickly look for a hdri map and there we have it now i've got an hdri map that affects the environment okay so that's what you do if you really want to add an hdri map instead of using um, 3d lights and stuff but you can use both obviously 
And one more thing, what you can also do is just go over to Shader Editor. We'll click on Object, click on World, press Shift A, go to Shader, Volume, sh uh, volume Scatter, plug it into the volume, but nothing happens. The reason being is because we need to go back to the render settings and turn on volumetrics. Oh, you can barely see a thing except for the one lamp. So what we need to do is just decrease the density, 0, 1, should do the trick. And now we have environmental fog. So now I've got this, this really creepy, beautiful scene of pillars on a road for no reason inside of the fog. Uh, I'll just disconnect that HDRI map. And even with all this fog, and shiny surfaces, it renders incredibly fast. Inside of the volumetric settings, you can just play around and see what best works for you. Generally, the default volumetric settings should work. We'll just turn on volumetric shadows. And now we have better looking shadows inside of the fog. So there's volumetric lighting and volumetric shadows. Okay. The next thing I want to show you is ambient occlusion. To make things a little bit easier to see, we're just going to delete this light, this camera, because we don't need it. Press Shift A, create a plane, scale it up. Shift D, duplicate this cube. Then press Shift Z. Press A, press G, and lift everything up above the, the grid. We then go to the render settings, scroll down, click on ambient occlusion. As you can see, we get some ambient occlusion. And it's pretty much as simple as that. We can increase and decrease the, the distance that the, the ambient occlusion um, spreads. We can increase and decrease the factor, which is how dark or light it is. We can even increase it to two, so it's twice as dark. Increase the ray trace quality, which makes it look a little bit better, but it's not entirely noticeable. Uh, in fact, let's just go to world settings here and just change the color of this to white so we can see things a little bit clearer that's pretty much all i've got to say about ambient occlusion that's how it works we can even start playing around with things like depth of field so what we've got to do is go to our render settings as usual go to depth of field scroll down turn on depth of field select our camera go over to the camera settings so as you can see, it sort of just makes everything blurry at the moment. And we've got to now decide what we want in focus. We can play around with the, the actual distance of things. Uh, play around with the ratio, which doesn't make too much of a difference. We can decide, okay, I want this one in focus. But we'll play around with the f-stop. So... You can see what's in focus and what's not in focus a little bit easier. And we'll just select the one that we want. Like that. Or we can do it manually just by doing this. We can even animate this value by pressing I and changing it from one to the other. So now when we scrub, we'll change that focal distance, which is quite a cool effect, but yeah, have fun. Anyway, if you have any further questions, just Comment below and I'll be sure to answer them as best I can.